So today we're diving into chapter eight. Here's the goal. I need your ears. I'm out next Monday for another one of our classes that like Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Cullen and I and everyone has to go to. Well, not everyone, but you know, all of us that are taking the class. So if we look at the calendar, my goal would be today we do 8-1 and get a really firm understanding. Tomorrow we do 8-2 and part of 8-3. Wednesday we do 8-3 and 8-4. And Thursday we do all of 8-5, wrapping up chapter 8 so that we're ready for the mastery. No. So here's the thing. We need to take the chapter 7 mastery, but I don't really like Monday masteries. Like, you guys are ready. We did 7-5 last Monday. I extended the due date, so if you're not done with 7-5 yet, you need to get it done, like, ASAP, but the due date's tomorrow evening. So if you don't have it done yet, get it done. My goal would be on Friday, then, we do the chapter 7 mastery. Don't hate me. Monday, we do the chapter 8 mastery, just because I have a sub. Now, I'm giving you a week notice... So this is not going to be a surprise, but that would be the idea, is that Friday we'll be taking our Chapter 7 test, Monday would be your Chapter 8 test, just because I'm not here. It makes sense to let the sub have kind of an easier time um, giving you guys a mastery as opposed to trying to teach something that you may not be prepared for. So our learning target for today, solving simple equations involves undoing or like an ungrouping or um, an inverse operation if you want to get technical so that we can work towards isolating the variable. Now, what's it mean to isolate something? Like, just anything in general. Mon Get it on its own. Get it on its own. Now, what's the point of isolating a variable? Why is it that we do this? To find out what it's worth. Yeah, we want to find out what it's worth. So, variable values, and this gets confusing for some people, every variable value has a value. We just have to figure out what it is. So a lot of times we might have variable values that represent like a change in something or an average or like a cost per item when you bought so many of them. Like if you went and bought a bag of Skittles, you didn't pay for each individual Skittle, but we could actually do the math to figure out what each Skittle is worth. So we would set up a variable problem and then solve it. So here we have a problem dealing with bagels. You guys, um, yeah, it's well, so Appalachia. Everyone has their own accent, so that was the first thing I was going to say. A lot of people will say this differently, depending on whether you say bagels or bagels, because it's really, technically, it's spelled bagels, like bag L's, bag L's. Maybe we should just say bagels. All right, so, so we've got this sign, this advertisement. To buy a dozen bagels is $7.80. Now, what's the difference between a dozen and a baker's dozen? Let's clear this up right now before we start. Katie? Okay, a dozen is 12 and a baker's dozen is 13. Do you know why? There's like a story of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know You know why, Oz? In case one gets messed up. Why? But like, what's it date back to? A baker's dozen literally dates back to the days of like kings and queens. Because when the baker would deliver goods to the king or queen or whoever, if there weren't a dozen, they could be killed for it. Like, that would be a far stretch. You'd have to probably catch someone on a really bad day. But if they only delivered a dozen, or, or they had ordered a dozen and they deliver 11, they could get in huge trouble. So instead of taking that chance that one might get damaged or one might get, like, disappeared or one might get eaten, they would put 13 in the box. So when it got to the king or queen or whoever, they were certain there would at least be a dozen good items there. So, baker's dozen, if you hear people talk about that, normally means 13. A dozen is only 12. So if we want to write and solve an equation to help him out trying to match the price per item. He's trying to figure out, okay, at Crosstown Bagels, what is the price of each item? Because my marketing strategy is going to be, you don't have to buy a dozen I'll sell it to you one at a time. How would we figure out, how would we write and solve an equation to figure this out? Sean, what do you think? Uh, we'll take the dozen. Wait, regular dozen. It's, oh, it's just a regular dozen. So you said you would take 12 divided by 780 if my smart wakes up. Why would you 12 divided by 780? Well, 
No, what, what did you just realize? It's the other way around, which is why we will often... They're smart. We need to start by writing an equation because then the equation tells me what to do. So the first thing I want you to write is um, like 12 bagels is 70. The cost of 12 bagels. So we're just leaving off saying the cost of, but that's what we're talking about. The cost of 12 is 780. Mathematically, what would is get replaced by? An equal sign. So do I know the price of each bagel? No. So when I change this to a mathematical equation, how could I write this? Jeremiah? One bagel. I want to change this sentence into a mathematical. Twelve bagels. No, $7.80 divided by 12 bagels. You're going too far. I just, all I want to do right now is just turn this into math. I just want to turn this sentence. You're, you're still too far ahead of me. All I'm trying to do is turn the sentence into a math sentence. Julian? Close. Twelve what? Ah. 12B equals 780. Because I have 12 of, of tells me to multiply, something that I don't know what it costs. I could not just write an equation 12 equals 780. That would not be true. Because 12 does not equal 780. But 12 times the price of this can equal 780. Then, Andrew... To get the B by itself, we just need to get rid of the 12, so we divide by 12 on both sides, and we get that the price of a single breakfast bagel, Anish, 65 cents. Don't forget your dollar sign. Could we just write the sign? You could, but most of the time we don't use the cent sign, so I'd rather you get in the habit of putting it in dollar form because we kind of let go of using the cent sign in elementary school. Ah, the cent sign only actually has one line, where the dollar sign is supposed to have two lines. So it's, it's the symbol. Like, it's just how they determined. Like, we're not saying C, we're saying cents, so we use the symbol. I don't know the exact reason why, but it's just because it is the symbol. Questions, comments, concerns, what we just did. So, yeah. Um, would it be wrong if you had knocked down the equation and just turned the second one into the Yes. For what we're trying to do, yes, that would be wrong. Because we are, we are practicing writing the equation and then solving the equation. You have to be able to take a verbal situation and write it into a mathematical equation because when we get into complicated verbal situations, that's almost harder than solving it. Figuring out how to write the equation gets really difficult. So why does this work? Why are we allowed to do this? Why, like, how was it that I was allowed to divide on both sides? Well, our properties of equality that deal with equations and really can deal with like lots of branches. We won't go down there. But we have lots of properties of equalities. You'll see through algebra and geometry and all the different branches. Right now, all we care about is addition and subtraction to start with. If I have five bananas in each hand, and I add two bananas on one side, am I equal anymore? No. No. What would I need to do to make it equal? Add two on the other side. Or take those two away and get it to balance back again. So whether I'm adding something on one side or subtracting something on one side, I have to do the same on both sides of the equals to make sure that my equation stays equal. Any questions on why this works, how we're allowed to do this? So let's try this. Solve the equation shown below. Well, we want to show, let's visualize what is it that we're doing. So we have our scale set up here. What is it that you want to do to isolate the variable term? Sam? 
get the x by itself. So what do I need to do, like visually, what do I need to do to get x by itself? Get rid of these three ones, so let's get rid of them. Boom, boom, boom. Now, if I got rid of those three ones, what else do I need to do? Julie? Take away on the other side also. Boom, boom, boom. And what we did algebraically was a minus three and a minus three. You can and you may have seen this in sixth grade. Draw like a dotted line down the middle of your equals to keep your left and your right side separated so that you know what I do on one side, I do on the other side. And when we get our answer then, this comes out to be x equals, what's 11 minus 3? 8. Questions, comments, concerns. Solve the got it alone. Solve it on your, yeah. We just talked, like, so imagine if you have, um, let's say, two things that are not the same to start with. So let's say you buy, I'm going to make math real easy right now. You buy a dozen eggs for $2. That's about the price of it. So we have, let me capture this and then be able to write this out. We have a dozen eggs, so 12E equals $2. So these things are not actually the same, but they're equal to each other. 12 eggs, $2, they, their values are equal even though they're not the same thing. If I, on this side, add six eggs, let's say, is my price still going to be $2? No. no. So the problem is when I do something on one side, I have to do something on the other side to keep it equal. But I don't, like, if I add six eggs over here, I now have $2 plus 6 eggs, which gets complicated. So the first thing we would want to do is solve for what, what is the price of an egg. And then if I want to add 6 eggs, I can do it more easily because I know the price. Now, because I made this math easy, 6 eggs would really cost a dollar. So to keep this equal, I would really have to add a dollar because 6 eggs is an equal value as a dollar. So I'm adding the same thing on both sides to keep this a balanced equation, keep this true. Then I find out that 18 eggs cost $3. But if I don't do the addition on both sides, I'm no longer equal. I'm no longer balanced. Same thing with subtraction. Same thing with multiplication or division. Addition is just the easiest one to show. Like, so if I double the amount of eggs over here, say we multiply by 2, I'd have to double the cost that I pay. That's the multiplicative property of equality. So, try this one. Take a moment because I told you guys to try it, then I started talking. Try this one on your own. Isolate B, solve for what it is worth. You've done with that. You are welcome to move ahead. Me? I did not. My friends did, but I came back and I helped my buddy with his floor. That house that we've been working on, but his floor is totally done now. Lots of math involved with that. All right. Mr. Williams is still out. Sean, what is happening to your B? It's being subtracted by 2. So what do you need to do to undo that or cancel that out? Add 2. So if we add 2, that undoes the subtraction of 2. I can put a dotted line down the middle if I want. I can add 2. Now this is where people make their mistakes. Negative 10 plus 2. Where do you land, Sean? No. Negative 10 plus going up to lands me at negative 8. Guys, this is where you're going to make your mistakes, and this is why we put so much emphasis at the beginning of the year on that addition subtraction. Be careful with different signs. Go back to those rules. If you forget, ask somebody for help. Check for verification. Do something that you check that. Now, here's the thing. Equations are wonderfully nice to us. 
Because if I don't know if my answer is right, I can check it. All I need to do, take the value that we solved, plug it in. So if I do negative 8 minus 2, do I get negative 10? Well, if I'm at negative 8 and I subtract 2, I land at negative 10, and this checks out. Any questions, comments, concerns? Now what? Yeah, I know. How come a negative minus a negative is positive? Because you are taking away a, a loss or taking away a, a subtraction. And when you undo or take away a loss, you're really gaining. So think about like the OSU Michigan football game, right? If you do the opposite of lose yards, what did you do? You gained yards. So, Michigan, if we had the ball, Michigan would want us to lose yards. If we did the opposite of what they wanted, the opposite of loss is a gain. Does that make sense? That was a great game. That was so fun. Technically, Michigan didn't play better than the back that they were playing. Okay, back on math. The multiplicative and division. The multiplicative and division properties of equality work exactly the same way. Have we been doing this for a while? We have, but not formally. Like we've been doing it informally, that it's just been involved in what we were doing. Now we're formally, like really rigorously practicing this stuff. So when we look down here, and I might as well capture this. When we look down here at our problem involving D, what is it? That's happening to your D. Lane is, I mean, a lot of people are out. Anish, what's happening to D here? It's being divided by negative 5. So to undo that, what would we do? We would multiply by negative 5, and we have to do it on both sides. So this is where I like to use parentheses. <coughs> if you just use parentheses, it, to me, it keeps things a little bit more clean. So please show that we're going to multiply by negative 5 on both sides. So why are we doing that again? Because what is happening to D right now? It's being divided by negative 5. To undo that, the inverse operation of division is multiplication, and we use the value that we're trying to get rid of. So this negative 5 is really negative 5 over 1, and the values on top and bottom cancel each other out, and my left side just becomes 1D, which we don't need to write the 1, but we can if we want to. Because negative 5 on top and negative 5 on bottom, think about this, negative 5 over 1 times D over negative 5. This would actually become negative 5D over negative 5. And a negative 5 divided by a negative 5 is 1. Any number divided by itself is 1. So this is 1D. We don't need the 1, but you can write it if you want to. That then will equal, break it up, 5 times 7? Uh, yeah, forget about the negative for a minute. We know my answer is going to be negative because 1 negative, 1 positive. 35. So 35, then 5 times 2 tenths? Yeah, 36. It, yep, so we get 36. Make sure you brought the negative with you. All we care about is that D is equal to negative 36. We don't really need this 1. You can have it if you want to, or you can erase it, because you don't need it. Try to isolate P on your own. So ask yourself, what's being done to the P? How do we undo that? Julian, what is it that's being done to the P? Like right now, as it sits, how would you read that? Negative 2 times P, right? Because when, when you don't put the operation in there, we assume they're being multiplied. So we have negative 2P. 
It's multiplication. How would we undo that? Division. Division. What do we divide by? The whole thing, so it's the negative 2. You want to get rid of the whole, like the entire number that's out there. So if it's negative, take the negative. So then, on the left side, I get just P. Now on the right side, I have 1 divided by negative 2. If I rewrite that, I could put the negative out front, but it's still 1 divided by 2. So in my mind, I could leave it as a fraction, or... What are you thinking? Hopefully you automatically think this. You could. 1 divided by 2, which is negative 2. No. That'd be 2 divided by 1. You're doing your division upside down. You have numerator smaller than denominator. You're back from a five-day break. It's a struggle. Monica? We could write this as a decimal also, and it's just negative 0.5. So whichever way you write it, whether you leave it as a negative 1 half or a negative 0 0.5, either way is correct. Do you see the error of your way? Yeah. So, Acadia, what's being done to my m value? So we need to... Multiply by 0 0.5. So, please, since there's no space here, go ahead and rewrite this down here. So we have m divided by 0 0.5 equals 11. So we're going to multiply on both sides by a half. Half on top and bottom cancel out, and we get just m. 11 times a half. Also absent. Ooh, close. What is it? Anybody? Six. Nope. 5.5. Ah, be careful. Break the 10 in half, then break the 1 in half. So you get 5.5. Now, to check your answer, set up the equation again. But now what you want to do is plug in 5.5 divided by 0 0.5. Does this equal 11? Yes. Now here's the thing. Division by a half is really like, Doubling. yeah, multiplication by 2. When you divide by a half, you really double, and that gets you 11. This does check out. Solve these next four in the boxes, figure out which one has the different solution. Three of them should have identical solutions. One of them will be the odd duck. Of what was happening. Mm. I forgot there were actually eight. Yeah, sorry. So the first round, three of the four have the same answer. The second round, three of the four have the same answer. So I'm going to give you like another minute or so. Keep working. Try to get all eight of these done if you can. Because then we'll just do cards to go through. I just, I don't Easy's relative. Yep. Where's my I said to me, you. Uh, depends on how they all sync back up. If you guys want to talk about progression, see me at lunch or at some other point. So Noah 
What do you do to your n in the 12 and equals 60 to get it by itself? Divide the 12 by itself, and you also, and what do you get? Um, n equals 5. Boom. And our next one, Jaslyn. What do we have to do to get this n by itself? We have to add 3 and 3 and 3 and 3 fourths. Exactly. Add 3 and 3 fourths. Do it to both sides. What do you get when you do that? 5. n equals 5. We have another 5 result. Andrew, what do you do in the next one? Ooh, now be careful when you say things like that. Over here, we're not multiplying it by itself. We're multiplying it by this whole term. So this is 1.25 times the entire n divided by 1.25. So just be careful with how you say that. But we do multiply on both sides. What's that give you for your n value? 5. So we could assume, but we can't, because assuming is way too dangerous. Mr. Smith? And then there's not too much work for the last one. What do you do? You just add it by negative 5, because what? negative 5 plus 15 is 10. What did you do oh. to solve the equation? I agree with what you said, but what did you physically do right here? I just added negative 5. No, you didn't. Go back to the beginning of your problem when you first started. I know what you got for your answer. I know that you got negative 5 for your answer. I'm with you on that. I agree. But what, so, Jeremiah, here's the thing to ask yourself. What's being done to n right now? How is this? This is n and a, a positive 15. What do you do to get rid of it? Yeah, you subtract 15 on both sides. So it's not you make it, it's what you're physically doing on both sides to get to that result. So you need to make sure that you show that work on all of them. If it's dividing, we multiply. If it's adding, we subtract. If it's subtracting, we add. If it's multiplying, we divide. So we're always doing the inverse operation of what's going on. Any questions on any of these four? This for Dom. Do you have the first one done? For the first one, you would do, for the W, you would do minus. Subtract what? One half. Yeah, you five. subtract the half from 3 fourths. So if you have a half subtracted away from 3 fourths, what do you end up with? One fourth. Just 1 fourth left. Yay, and Ashley, what do we do to get our W by itself here? Ooh, this is 3.5. Yeah, but we do divide that by 14 because we do that division on both sides. W would then equal... I'm not certain. 25 hundredths, which is actually... Yeah, if we think about 25 hundredths, that's also 1 fourth. So I'm going to go ahead and write it in fraction form. As long as you recognize that these are the same, then you're fine. Huh? Oh, always, yeah. Uh, Sam, what do I do here to get my W by itself? Okay, you add uh, 0.75. I add 75 hundredths to both sides. What do you get there? You get um, negative 25 hundredths. Ooh, a negative 25 hundredths. This looks like it's going to be the odd oddball out or odd duck or whatever you want to say. The bad solution. But let's check. Or the black sheep, or any of those kids' stories that, or the what the um, rainbow fish that was another one. I love rainbow fish story. So, Ellie, what do we do to isolate the W here? Mm -hmm. So we divide, guys. Now this actually, if I was trying to do this on my own. I'd look at the 1 and 1 fourth as an improper, because that's then 5 fourths. And instead of division, I could multiply by, 
Yeah, by the reciprocal. So the fives on top and bottom cancel out, and W is still one fourth. Now, of course, you could use a calculator, but it's more rewarding if we do it this way. Would anybody be so kind as to go grab what I printed off the printer? And it's your closest. Oh, yeah. Do we think we need to solve these final, this final got it? You, do we have a pretty good handle on this? Okay, what Evie would we do here then? To solve the 2.5a equals 30. You would want to solve this. And I, so you would divide by 2.5 for each. And I ended up getting 12. So then for this one. <laughs> Right, you so hopped, I think is what they're like. Oh, You're fine. Keep going. So I, you also would want to divide for this one. I need a whole time for this. Which also equals 12. And then for this one. Are they all equal? I don't know, are they? I don't know. Oh, now she sounds like a real teacher. Spicy. Spicy. Which also equals 12, so they would Thank you very much. Would you like to collect these or pass these out? Now, the other thing I want to point out, guys, the easier way to actually do this, when you have a fraction as a coefficient, the number that's the multiplier, this 4 thirds A equals 16. I want you guys to rewrite this somewhere, or if you still have space down here, 4 thirds A equals 16. The easier way to get rid of this fraction is actually multiplication. Multiplication by 3 on top will destroy the 3 on bottom. 4 on bottom will destroy the 4 on top. So if I just multiply by 3 fourths, that is a quicker way to get these 4s to cancel and these 3s to cancel. Anybody have any questions on that? Why we would actually multiply by the reciprocal? Yeah. So multiplication by the reciprocal is the inverse. Even though it's not the opposite operation, even though we're multiplying and it was multiplying, we really get here by thinking about division by 4 thirds. Well, you can't actually divide by 4 thirds. So when we try to do the division, it takes us to doing the multiplication. They're both actually doing the same thing. So you gotta like you gotta let go of multiplication and division. They're the same thing. Just one uses the in like the reciprocal, where the other one uses the actual. So instead of dividing by the actual, we multiply by the reciprocal. But using the reciprocal is what makes it the inverse. Does that make sense? So, 8, 2. We have, yep, we have our bagel situation again. We have a good 8 minutes. We can probably get through the front of this, potentially. So, we now see if you buy a dozen at normal price, we'll throw in a 13th for 13 cents. So, now we need to write this out as an equation knowing that the total final price of all 13 is 553. Does anyone think they know how to write this as an equation where we don't know, like what we're trying to solve is what does each of the dozen cost? Because that 13th bagel is a different price altogether. Sean? So still, though, you haven't set anything up. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I need to make sense of it. I need to be able to see it. we got to set it up. But that's not an equation. You're telling me an operation to do. I want to start with an equation. I, again, I agree with what you're telling me to do, but you haven't started yet. You're immediately trying to dive in, and like you haven't, like, so to make an analogy, you don't jump into the pool with your shoes on, you're like, you gotta start before you dive in. 
Jeremiah? Wouldn't that be five dollars and forty cents equals twelve bagels? Again, you're jumping in with your shoes on. Well, what if you have shoes? So if I think about the situation, if I think about the situation, we're buying a dozen, so go ahead and write this out, plus that extra, or the 13th if you want to say that. So we buy a dozen, then we buy a 13th, and that all together is going to cost $5.53. The dozen bagels and the 13th, you get it for $5.53. Our dozen bagels, though. How many is a dozen? Twelve. Twelve. Do we know what each of them cost? No. So that's our 12B. Do we know what the 13th bagel costs? Yes. yes. 13 cents. And that still will equal 553. Now I can do what Sean has been wanting me to do and get rid of that 13th bagel. So if I get rid of this 13 cents, now, here's the issue though, Sean, you told me subtract a bagel. I'm not set up with 13 bagels. I'm set up with 12 bagels and the price of the 13th. So I don't need to subtract a bagel, I subtract the price and I subtract the price. So now we get to that point we're 12 bagels, and somebody had said this also, but you guys just have to know how to set it up and process through it. Equals 540. Can I subtract bagels away from the price? Because I want you guys to understand why we do what we do. Can I, like, if I wanted to get one bagel, I could just subtract 11 bagels, right? Yeah. No. No. no, because you have to get rid of <coughs> So here's the question Can I subtract? pastries away from an amount of dollars? No. Like pastries, like bakery items. I can't take a pile of money and pull donuts out of it. Like it does, that doesn't work like that. But could I take a pile of pastries and divide them to like multiple people and then take a pile of money and divide it to multiple like port parts or people or whatever? That's why here, you can't subtract, because always when I say, how do we get one bagel? Somebody, some smart aleck in the back of the room normally, says, you get rid of the all but one. We, yeah, but you can't subtract here. You have to do the division, because I can't subtract bagels from money. I can divide both of these. So that's why we divide by 12, divide by 12, and we get that the price of the single original dozen bagels, Ellie was, one bagel is 45 cents. 45 cents. Yeah, yeah, it is. I don't know how often you buy bagels, but it is. So this is cheaper. Any questions on this? So we have like three, four minutes left. No, I want you to check out this example. You want to carefully, so the length of an average toucan, which is a type of parrot, is about two-thirds, or sorry, uh, the Macaza type of parrot. I think the toucan's in a different family. But, so, the toucan is about two-thirds the length of the macaw. So, the toucan is two-thirds the length of the macaw. So, if we were to write this in a verbal statement, we could say the toucan is two-thirds of the macaw. And my friend actually used to own a macaw. Well, still does. It's just down in Florida now. His name's Captain Jack. Jack Sparrow. Yeah, the, the bird's name is Captain Jack. No, bir uh, parrots live for a very long time. If you get a bird, know that you're getting into a long-term commitment. Like over 100 years. Yeah, so if I were to make this a mathematical statement now, do I know the toucan length? Honestly? Um, no, so how in the breakfast system, the donut between two of them, he would like T. Okay, so I could say T. So T 
is would be equals. Equals. And then two thirds up would be the multiplication. So uh -huh. two thirds n. I got it right. Two. Now, when we go back and analyze, it says, it says, uh, yeah, we two cans are about 24 inches long. So actually, we have 24 equals two thirds times m. And guys, here's one of those cases. I have a fraction. I need you to get this written down before you leave, and I still have a minute anyway. She's just releasing early. I have a fraction coefficient. We want to multiply by its reciprocal. What? Wait, that would that would make sense. Because the three on top and bottom cancel, the twos on top and bottom cancel, this gets me just m is equal to, now I can do 24 divided by 2 is 12, then times 3 is 36. So the macaws are about 36 inches long. Guys, a macaw is about 3 feet. So this bird is about this tall. No, from, its, from the top of its feathers on its head to the end of its tail is 3 feet. Now the tail is really long. So the bird itself is probably only about two feet, but the tail is like an extra foot. Oh my God. Yeah, and when they fly at your face, it's kind of scary. That's why I don't know bird and flying on their shoulder. No, Captain Jack wasn't that nice. He was cool, like, and he was like really beautiful.